Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here on Silverwind with Manfredi Lefebvre Dovidio, who is the executive chairman of Silver Sea Cruises. And you, most of us know Manfredi very well, but we're here to talk about a new book he's just written about his family and the history of his family in cruising. And this is Insider Travel Report. So the title of this book is Sailing Through History, A Family Dynasty, which is the, really the history of your family. Uh, now, why did you write this book at this time? Well, I mean, the book comes because before, my, when my father was in his late years, I decided I wanted to have a research made about the family history. Because we had a lot of stories, but nothing was fully in, a, uh, in, a, in the proper order. And so I had this uh, being written. Unfortunately, my father in the meantime died, but it was dedicated to him. And, uh, and it was a great discovery because it told us a lot about the roots of our family. And, uh, and we see that a, ro- a lot on what then we built in Silver Sea, I think. Yeah, so how did, how did the whole family involvement with cruising start? Well, that's the last part of the book. Okay. okay, so the last part of the book, my father was a very close friend and a business partner of a ship owner called Vlasov. Mm-hmm. And Vlasov had started one of the first cruise lines, which was called Sidmar. Well, you know, I know Sidmar, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. so Sidmar used to be a passenger uh, cruise line transporting people to Argentina and Australia. And when the, these, those routes were uh, replaced by airplanes, then transformed the ships into cruise ships. Mm-hmm. And that was the beginning of Sitmar. At a certain point, Sitmar built, well, wanted to build some new cruise ships, newly built. At that point, my father bought the controlling stake of Sitmar mm-hmm. and built the new ships. And after a while, we got an offer we couldn't refuse and merge with Princess Cruises. So that was the beginning of how we got involved into cruising. And then how did Silver Sea evolve? Actually? Well, you know, we did a very fantastic deal but we were missing cruising. So we decided that we wanted to go again into cruising. So we built the first two ships, Silver Cloud and Silver Wind, and decided to name the company Silver Sea Cruises. Your father was still alive at this point? My father was still alive, yes. He was still inspirational. And then uh, I took over in 2001, the, the management of this company, and we've been growing it ever since. In fact, now you're, it's, you're on an anniversary year coming up here. Years. And yes. Yeah, it's how many years? Sir? Yeah, so. One of the last things my father, in the last year of his life, he told me, I asked him, what would you want for the future? And so he said, uh, oh, 12 ships. Now mind me, he was 97. And he says he wants to have 12 ships, we're going to build eight ships. So never in his life he could have seen it. But that was how he was. And here we are, and I think, not nine ships, but not 12 ships, but at least 12 ships. And what would he think of this company now? I think he would be very proud. I mean, he loved uh, ships and uh, business in general, but ships and the sea. Now, how has cruising changed in your long career in the industry with your father and then now? Uh, what is different from when you started? Oh, I mean, uh, it's a very, very segmented industry. First of all, it's 10 times bigger. No, 3 million, 30 million. Uh, a lot of new players, a lot of concentration a lot of uh, growth in size and number of ships that's massive mm-hmm. and segmentation so you have products for everybody so it's it's a very mature industry at this point yeah and also you you started as a luxury line but then evolved into expedition cruising as well right which is ex- luxury expedition right. cruising so it's still luxury so it's both but that that's something probably you didn't think of at the beginning uh, when you started silver sea right no, well, nobody thought about the expedition, actually. Now everybody thinks about the expedition. So at a certain point, we were in 2006, 2007, I thought, how can I expand the use of this brand, which is so successful? And so I figured out that there was a segment of the market, which actually, like, my, like myself, want to go on a cruise, but go into new places and uh, uh, more in contact with nature. So that was the beginning. So that's more, it's much more destination focused and going for exotic well, destinations. Silver Sea is destination focused, but that is destinations that you cannot reach in other ways unless you're on a cruise ship, no, which is quite unique. 
Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, a, a, more than a year ago, you then partnered with Royal Caribbean. And how has that uh, helped Silver Sea, would you say? Well, you know, today we want to ship, we go and order it. In the old times, I had to see capital I had to allocate, credit I had to obtain. Royal Caribbean is a very well organized company and a very good balance sheet, so it can secure the growth that Silver Sea needs. So this has really helped grow Silver Sea now and into the future, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm in this situation, so I wanted to put the best for my company. And I think that with Royal, I can secure it. And the best is being the leader. And to be the leader, you have to be ahead of the pack, and you have to build the ships that you need when you need them. Well, now you're building luxury ships, you're building luxury expedition ships, so you can really do a lot of things and, and expand the fleet pretty well. Exactly. So that gives us the possibility to capture all the market potential for our brand. So what would you say the luxury uh, cruise customer, how has that person changed over the years? Well, I mean, it, uh, you know, what? Uh, uh, first of all, you, the, the size of our market has been growing because people, luckily, are living more. And luckily, they're active longer. But also, you have a lot of more wealth at younger ages. So then, the people that want to enjoy a luxury cruise go from 40 to 80, 85, 90. People still want to travel when they're in the late uh, years, and they want to do a luxury product when they're young. So it, it has broadened a lot. So you have a much broader client base than you did. Yeah. Exactly. And it's broadened also from a geographical point of view. It used to be a very, very Anglo-Saxon product, the cruising. Now it's a very Anglo-Saxon and European expanding to Asia. So it's also, you know, the, the markets where we sell the cruises are expanding. So how has the onboard product changed over the years in terms of what these people want? I mean, it evolves, you know, it's, it evolves in many ways. You have people that want to still have very traditional, so they want to have uh, uh, some formal lights, they want to have the main dining room, but a lot of people instead want to have alternative options. It's all about optionality, personalization, your own identity, you want to be recognized. So that is evolving very much. Now, uh, also, uh, obviously, we're going out to about 97,000 travel advisors out there. How important have travel advisors, travel agents been to the growth of Silver Sea? I mean, it's, uh, it's a bulk, no? I mean, Silver Sea is built on the support of travel advisors because they know and they trust Silver Sea. They know that if they send one of their loyal um, friends and uh, clients to Silver Sea, the person coming back will be happy. So that's very important. Now let's get back to the book. Uh, are, are there any? High, what are? What is? How is it organized? And, and what are kind of some of the the stories you tell in it? Well, I mean, it's it's first of all, it's on, it's not on my telling. It's a research. Right. And the research starts in 1630 about, and this family which uh, moves to a certain part of France uh, for some uh, reasons, and from there moves to another part of France and then comes to Italy following the revolution, the French Revolution, and establishes in the Kingdom of Naples and starts a number of activities. The first shipping activity was started in 1818, so the first ownership of a ship we had in that year, and then it continued. They continued with industries, they diversified, they married into the top aristocracy of Europe. Uh, and. Uh, you know, it's a, a typical story of the 19th century. So palaces and, uh, uh, and innovation in the meantime. So they innovated a lot in their industry, they created new industries, and at the same time they were linking to the traditional part of the world, which is the old aristocracy. That's quite interesting. And the story goes through generations, and you have the typical cycle, and that cycle goes through the first generation, second generation, the third generation. Third generation usually is less successful, unfortunately. Then you have again, fourth, fifth, sixth, I'm the sixth generation. Uh, so then, uh, you know, it will continue. And you have other cycles which are geopolitical. The family was based in Naples, and Naples was a very powerful and wealthy kingdom. It was absorbed in another kingdom. And the business uh, was not so successful after that. So. You have also that cycle, you have innovation. We were very innovative in our industries. And then family members detached from the industry and innovation uh, stopped. So you also see that it's very teaching. You learn a lot of what the economical development has been.
Yeah, and also now, and obviously in the last uh, 25 years, there's been a lot of innovation uh, due to you and your father, right? Yes, yes. My father was a genius, but I mean, it's not for me to tell. I'm very proud of me having been his son. But you see, my ancestor, the second generation, he went on a honeymoon to America. Now you have somebody in the mid, the first half of the 19th century, that is taking a steamship and going all the way to America for his honeymoon, taking his wife, a southern Italian princess, to travel around uh, America, which is a real passion for travel. The same man was sent to study and to learn his industry in Manchester and in France. So uh, it's a history of a great attitude to travel, I think. So really it is a family history that ultimately evolves to the point we are today with Silver Sea Cruises, right? Yeah, I think uh, I identify myself uh, a lot in the people of my family, of the first generations. The first generation, the first man, he was working and sleeping in the carriage. So he built that how he's built it. The second one, he's a guy who went to America, he's a guy who went to England, went to France. So it's quite interesting. No, it sounds fascinating, and I, I still have to get my copy, though I guess I get that tonight when we're going to have a book signing uh, with, with you and, and really learn about this. There's, it, it's a fascinating story about a family that really has been so critical to cruising in the last 25, 30 years. Yeah, I hope you will enjoy it. Let me know. I will let you know, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Manfredi, thank you so much for taking the time to explain the book and also the history of Silver Sea and everything that's gone on over the past uh, 25 years. It's been, I've, I've known this uh, line since I first got in the industry. It's about, about as long as I've been in the industry. is about 30 years. And uh, just to see you build this line and uh, the, uh, all of the attributes it has, it's been an amazing, amazing story. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's uh, enjoy it. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.